Hey guys, this is Our Fire. In this week's snapshot, 17 week 16, Mojang made some changes to command blocks, specifically the chain command block and how they execute. The summary of it is that whereas before chain command blocks were scheduled to execute one tick later, now they are executed in real time. So this one is executed, and then this one, and then this one, and the commands aren't scheduled, they are looked at immediately before being run. I will post a link in the description to a video by Slice Lime, who did a better job of explaining it than me and who goes into more detail. For this video, I wanted to show you basically how you can do loops with these command blocks, whereas previously, in order to do loops, you'd have to have a one tick delay in between cycles. However, these loops all happen in the same tick. For this, I have a redesign of my instant exponent system that I made a while back that used entities and the execute command to execute a bunch of multiplications all in the same tick in order to get instant exponents. This one doesn't use any entities at all. Instead, it uses zero tick chain block loops to execute all the multiplications in the same tick. So if I go over here, I can set the base to 2 and the exponent to 3. That should give a result of 8, so I will update those things and then calculate, and you can see the result is 8 over there. And, uh, okay, yeah, so that sign popped off. I'll say why later. I forgot to do something about that. Anyway, if I change this to a 4, then I will get 16 if I update it like that. If I change this to a 3, that's going to be 81. And I can do higher stuff too, so if I do, let's go 16, and we'll go 2 to the 16, update it, and there, that's the answer. Alright, so now let me tell you how this is working. This is just to set up the, the, um, the exponents. So we have copy the base to a player that is hidden on scoreboard, and this is just a done so that if those values in scoreboard were to change while this was executing, it wouldn't mess things up. And then it does the same thing for exponent, it copies it into its own private player, and then it also has its own private player for a result that will save the result until it's ready to be output to scoreboard. Now it will get into the loop part. So here the first command block enables the loop by setting a command block into a certain direction. So you can see this is the command here. It will set this command block right here, empty command block used for switching chain direction, it will set this facing south, which is this direction here. The sign just popped off there because this whole thing had to be cloned, and I will get into that a little bit later. So currently this is facing west because at the last cycle it disabled the loop and put it facing this direction to break out. That's what this command block does over here. After it's enabled, this is the first command block in the loop. It tests for whether it should break out of the loop, which is whether the exponent is less than or equal to zero. And if it is, then this conditional command block will read the success of this one, and it will set this command block facing west right here, so it will be facing the direction it's currently facing. However, if the exponent is not less than or equal to zero, this thing will still be facing south in this direction from this one that's set up over here, and then it will go into the loop over here, which will do the calculations. So this multiplies the result by base, and then this subtracts one from the exponent. So this is just doing multiplications. And then this one over here is the most important part of this whole loop. It's the only reason it functions. So the way the command blocks are uh, implemented right now is that they're only allowed to execute once per tick. So even though these things are executed in real time, they're not scheduled in advance, they're still only limited to one execution per tick. So what this thing does is it clones these six command blocks in the loop right here, it moves them to their same place. So what that will do is copy all these things, then delete these six blocks, and then put them back in this place. That's what the clone move command does. And doing that will reset their tick counts so they can be executed again in the same tick. And because these things are now scheduled in real time, immediately after this is finished, it's going to look at where this is pointing and start executing them here again. And it will continue on in the loop. 
After that, it will test whether the exponent is zero or less. And then if it's not, it will keep going through this loop. And when it's finally finished, then it will set this to facing west. And this command block over here will be executed to just output the result to the result on the scoreboard. Right, so I hope I explained all that clearly. Basically, all you need to do to make a loop is to have these command blocks here. You need to have something to test for whether your loop should be finished. This, which should change the direction of a command block if your loop is finished. This over here, a command block whose direction can either be changed to finish out the chain of commands or to go back into the loop. And uh, you'll also need to put this over here to set up the loop. So you'll first put this facing into the loop, and then inside your loop, you'll do the break condition. Then this will set it outside of the loop if the break condition is met. This is the one that is switched. And then this one can lead into your loop, so you don't have to be limited to two. You can move these command blocks out here in this direction, and then pull them back over here in this direction, so you won't run out of space while you're doing the loop. And then finally, right before you go back into the testing condition one, you're going to need to clone all your command blocks into the loop. So you'll do clone, all the command blocks, then replace and move. By the way, I didn't make up this technique myself. I got it from a Reddit post, which I will link in the description for the sake of giving credit where it's due. And that's pretty much all you need to do to make a loop. You can run your own commands and do whatever you want for your own system. And yeah, this whole thing is pretty cool. So I hope to do more with this system and now with this uh, loops in zero ticks there can be a lot more complicated computational stuff done in zero ticks which can improve like some in-game minecraft computers and minecraft map stuff if you need it and a whole bunch of things and by the way these commands that are executed in the same tick they're all in the same tick so they're supposed to be instant in Minecraft, but of course you're limited by the speed of your computer. So what I have here is a loop that will infinitely loop without breaking. So this will set result to zero, then this will add it to one, and then this will go back into the loop. So these two command blocks will loop back and forth. If I press this button, it will start the loop and it will only stop when it hits the new game rule that has been added max chain command block. So if I do game rule max chain command blank, you can see it's currently set to that number right there. So then the result will be actually just one less than it is now when it's finished. So if I go and set this to let's say 20,000 and then I will hit execute. This button freezes and this redstone doesn't activate until it hits the result. Now you see the result is 10,000 when I said it was supposed to do 20,000 commands. That's because this is one command and this is one command. So actually it's doing two commands for every one it adds to the scoreboard. So if I do this again, you can see I'll press the button, then the scoreboard will start to go up, and then this, which should be instant, actually has quite a bit of delay before it finally says done. So press, there's delay, and then it's done. Now for this one, I have basically the same thing, except for these, there's a bunch of empty command blocks in between them. I just wanted to see how much delay an empty command block would make versus a command block with a command in it. So let me uh, adjust the game proportionally. You'll see there's only two here, but there's eight here. So I will up it times four from two to eight, like this. And we'll see how much longer it takes. So if I press this button, and it goes through the delay, and it takes a bit longer, and then it goes done. Right, so that takes longer to do the same amount of work with a bunch of delay in it, but what if I change that back so we can just see whether the, the delay is shorter than the command. So if I press this, then it's a lot shorter to execute the same number of commands, or the same number of chain command blocks, because most of them aren't doing anything. So the command that's inside it does in fact make a difference as to how long it takes. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for this video. I haven't done any more in-depth analysis on how much these commands affect delay and other stuff like that, 
but that can be saved possibly for another video. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope this was informative, and I hope you have a lot of creative things you have ready to do with these new loops. So, that's it. See you next time. Bye!